Hi, I'm Robin Appleby, a senior consultant within our technical enablement team. And today we're going to look at how you can share maps through ArcGIS for Power BI and enable more people to access your maps through their Power BI dashboards. We're going to do this in a number of different ways. Firstly, we're going to look at how you can create maps from scratch within Power BI. Then we'll look at how you can link Power BI to ArcGIS to ingest ArcGIS data into those uh, reports. And finally, we'll look at how you can share those Power BI dashboards to a wider audience. At the end, I'll point you to the help system for uh, ArcGIS for Power BI that will provide further clarification on all of the tools that I show and also the way that they're licensed. Power BI provides a whole range of different visualization techniques for your data, whether that be uh, tables, charts, indicators, and also maps. And actually, there are a range of different map visualizations, either out of the box or as preview functions. Each has its own limitations, as you can see from some of the screenshots. But ArcGIS for Power BI is the most feature rich visualization and does come out of the box, so there's no need to install any separate plugins. Without any ArcGIS license, ArcGIS for Power BI offers a good range of functionality, as shown on the slide. We'll run through this in a demonstration in a moment, but just to pick out a couple of highlights. Firstly, as well as mapping coordinates and addresses, ArcGIS for Power BI allows you to map out information against standard boundaries, such as countries, counties, districts, or even UK postal geographies. Secondly, you have far more control than other tools around the symbology of your data, including things like heat maps and clustering. And thirdly, you're able to add an additional layer onto the map from ArcGIS Online. One public reference layer can be added with the standard version. So let's look at some of this capability in action. Here I have a Power BI dashboard that I've started to create relating to some housing properties around Exeter. We have information about the property types, uh, repairs costs, and um, void status. But I want to add a map. So I'll go to the visualization gallery and pick the ArcGIS for Power BI visualization. You'll notice that it gives me the option to sign into ArcGIS, but I don't have to if I'm going to use the freely available capability. So let's instead go to the fields list and choose the coordinates that exist within my data, lat and long, and drop them into the appropriate wells. And you'll see that instantly the data is symbolized for me. In the background, we have a grayscale map. But if I want to change this, I can go to the formatting options and add in from the map tools the base map selector. And then within the map visualization, we can choose from a selection of standard base maps. To change the symbology of my points, we can again go back to the wells and just drag the appropriate data into a well. So, for example, if I want to symbolize by property type, I drop that into the color bucket and we can see the information automatically updated. For more fine grain control over the symbology, I can open up the layer list and go into the symbology options. And here we can select things like heat maps, clustering, and we can even have far more control over the color schemes used. To add an additional layer from ArcGIS Online, we can browse against reference layers, find an appropriate data set, and then just add it to the map. as well as providing context, reference layers can be used uh, to interrogate the data, so we can get pop-ups from that data. 
And if we make it active in the table of contents, we can even use reference layers as a way of subselecting data. Finally, we can add specific locations onto the map. And we can generate drive times around those locations. So let's summarize what we just saw. Mapping locations, using standard base maps, changing the symbology, adding a reference layer, performing some simple analysis. This is all included out of the box with the ArcGIS for Power BI Standard Edition. So what about connecting to ArcGIS? Let's have a look at how we can share data between ArcGIS and Power BI and then how we can bring ArcGIS data directly into Power BI. When it comes to sharing data, it's worth pointing out that in many occasions, the data that you want to see within Power BI or ArcGIS exists within one central repository that both systems can access. That might be an Excel spreadsheet on a file system, it might be data in a relational database, or it might even be an online service. Only when data exists in a format that is not supported by the other system do we need to think about ways of connecting it up. So for example, if we had data in a ArcGIS Online system and we wanted to access that within Power BI, we need some way of live referencing that data directly into Power BI. And that's what the ArcGIS Maps for Power BI visualization allows me to do. By using ArcGIS for Power BI with a named user login, we also get some additional capability. We can access all base maps within the organization. We can add as many reference layers as we want, both public ArcGIS Online layers, but also private layers from ArcGIS Online or ArcGIS Enterprise. And this really becomes powerful when we want to join those data sets to other elements within our Power BI dashboard. And we'll see this later on. The ArcGIS Identity version also gives us the ability to publish to web and embed. We'll look at this a little bit more later on. So let's have a look at how we can link ArcGIS to Power BI. In this dashboard, we're looking at a series of properties across London. And the map is showing me the location of those properties with some additional layers as well. So let's just unpick this map for a moment. So the locations are coming from my spreadsheet, which is being visualized elsewhere within the dashboard. And we can see that the interaction exists between the dashboard and the map. But to provide context, I'm able to add multiple reference layers. In this case, some purchasing power data from the Living Atlas, some tube station locations that I have within my ArcGIS Online account. And we can also see demographics about the area that I'm currently looking at. In the second example, we've set up a layer join between reference layers and other elements in the dashboard. So again, let's explain what we're seeing here. We have various sales regions across the UK. These are bespoke regions that exist as a layer within ArcGIS Online. And within our dashboard, we have information about the salespeople that uh, work within these particular regions. Within my visualization options, I have established the fact that there are regional uh, 
fields that link the different data sets together. This means that I can then establish a layer join between the features in the map and the features elsewhere. And I can now use this to select out regions on the map and drive behavior elsewhere within my dashboard, or to select items in my dashboard and have the map update accordingly. So the key benefits of the ArcGIS Identity version at this stage are the ability to reference your own private content from ArcGIS Enterprise or ArcGIS Online, and to then set up the links between that and other elements within your dashboard. So let's finally look at different ways in which you can share your dashboards with other users. The first two options are to simply share the uh, PBIX file, so save the desktop version of the Power BI dashboard and give that to another person. If you were to do that, the other user, if they're accessing private content, will also need to have a named user for ArcGIS. Similarly, I can publish the report to Power BI, and the same is true. If the map contains private content, the end user will need to have a named user to access this. Finally, if we want to share our dashboard to a much wider audience, then we can publish to web and then embed that dashboard within other websites. But this is subject to some specific limitations. So do refer to the help file or use the validate function that I'll demonstrate in a moment. So let's just have a look at how we go about doing this. If I go back to my uh, first map as an example, I can simply publish this to my Power BI service. It will create a data set and a report, and then I can open that up and use it without issue. If I want to publish my dashboard to a wider audience and use the publish to web option, I need to run a check first to make sure that my map is uh, meeting the requirements of, uh, of that. And I can do this by pressing on the cog and choosing to validate. You can see that in this case, this map is not suitable because I have not mapped my data by coordinates, but used postcodes. I've used bespoke reference layers and I've added infographic cards. So I would need to fix these issues before I could publish this map further. Once you have published your Power BI dashboard, you can then embed it within any experience that you want. Here, for example, I'm using Experience Builder and I've embedded my Power BI dashboard directly within here. I hope that's given you a good overview of ArcGIS for Power BI and some of the capabilities that it offers. If you want to learn more, please do refer to the online help that's shown on screen at the moment, where you'll find much more information about how to get started, but also specific details about the ArcGIS licensing requirements and the Power BI licensing requirements and supported environments. Thank you for watching.